Hey guys, uh, in this video I'm going to go over how to obtain the plastic collapse load multiplier for a thin walled plate girder. Uh, the girder we're going to be considering is going to be an 8 meter long simply supported beam with lateral restraints at the top of the web stiffeners. The cross section is going to be a plated I-beam with a uh, depth of 1000 millimeters, width of 250, flange thickness of 12 and web thickness of 4 millimeters. So it's going to be extremely slender. The material we're considering is grade 350 steel with a modulus of 200 GPA, a Poisson ratio of 0.25 and a yield stress of 360 MPA. We're going to be applying a representative loading scenario to this member which is going to be two point loads spaced at a thousand millimeters about the center and they're going to have a magnitude of one kilonewton each which gives us a uh, maximum bending moment of 3.5 kilonewton meters. We're going to be looking at the plastic collapse load multiplier which doesn't consider any bending, uh, any, any buckling either local or global so we're going to be obtaining the full plastic moment of this cross section. So when we calc that out we get a uh, plastic section moment of 1410 kilonewton meters which as a multiplier on 3.5 kilonewton meters gives us 403. So that is the load multiplier we are going to be expecting to find in our FEA. So let's move to strand 7 and start modeling. So we're going to import the geometry and turn on the fill for groups. So let's assign three groups to this. So we need one for the uh, flanges, web and stiffeners. So we'll assign the, uh, the web first. Next, the stiffeners and the flanges. Okay, um, we're going to assign a, we're going to define a stress strain curve. So, under layouts, stress versus strain, define a new table, and we'll use the equation editor to define an elastically, perfectly plastic uh, stress strain curve with an initial modulus of 200 GPA, yield stress of 360 and we'll use a very tiny tangent modulus of the initial modulus on 10,000 which is 20 MPA. Okay, so now we need to define some properties. So under our properties we'll define three different uh, plate property types. The first will be T equal to 4, that's our web. Next will be T equal to 6, that's our stiffeners. And finally T equals to 12, and that's our flanges. With all of these selected, we're going to import the uh, default structural steelwork from the library, and that gives us our linear material properties of 200 GPA modulus and 0.25 Poisson ratio. Uh, we need to select our stress strain curve we just defined for each of these. And finally, under the thickness tab, assign the respective thicknesses. Okay, so now we just need to assign these properties to our groups. So everything is property 1 by default, which is the web property, so we can go straight to our stiffeners. And under attributes face property type, can assign them to property 2, and the flanges to property 3. Okay, so let's assign some boundary conditions now. So I'm going to turn off the fill on the geometry and zoom into this end. This is going to be our fixed end of our simply supported beam. It's so under vertices we're going to assign some restraints. And this is our sliding end. Right, and then finally at the top of our stiffeners we need to apply a uh, lateral restraint, so that's just a dy translational restraint. And the last thing we need to do on the geometry is to assign our loading. So we'll just turn off the flanges for now 
and under edges global pressure we're going to assign those one kilonewton point loads as global edge pressures to the stiffness so we'll go to our z minus one kilonewton divided by 250 millimeters times six millimeter thickness and that's going to be assigned to these edges okay so we can turn the flanges back on we'll just check that we don't need to clean anything so under clean we'll just clean the geometry and there was nothing to clean that's good so under mesh we'll now use surface auto mesh with a maximum edge length of 40 millimeters no transitioning and our target is quad 4 plate elements so now we can hit mesh and that's our mesh so we've got a nice regular square mesh approximately Okay, um, before we solve, let's just make sure we've assigned everything correctly. So under our entity display, we'll just contour our discrete membrane thicknesses. And we can see we have indeed applied a 12mm thick flange, a 6mm thick stiffener, and a 4mm thick web. And under summary, go to our attributes, our plate element attributes, and the total v vertical load we've applied is negative 2 kilonewtons, which is what we were intending. So I think we've applied, uh, or we've modelled our beam uh, correctly. Okay, so now under solvers, we want to go to our nonlinear static solver. We want to uncheck nonlinear geometry. We only want to consider nonlinear material in this case. Moving to our load tab, we need to assign some load increments. So we'll go to auto create increments. We'll start at a load factor of 0 and go up to a factor of 500. Our expected failure load is 403. So we'll try and go just above that to 500. And we'll try and do that in 51 increments. So that steps up the load factor by 10 for each increment. Uh, we need to enable freedom case 1. We don't need to touch anything under the matrix tab. Under the parameters tab, we just need to make sure that under substepping, we enable some form of substepping. We can really use any of these in this case. I just always go with displacement control, the arc length method, unless there's a good reason not to. And that's it, we can hit solve now. Okay, so we're at increment 42, and the solver's been substepping for a little while, so we're going to kill the solver now. Do you wish to terminate and close the solver? Yes. Okay, so we can open up the result file now. So let's, under our entity display, we'll turn off the element outlines and we'll expand our shells to solids. We'll go to settings and we'll enable contour, stress, combined, the von Mises stress, using Gauss points placed at nodes, averaging the same property. So at increment 1 we have a load factor of 0, we have 0 stress. If we go right to the last item we solved, we have a load factor of 409, and if we turn on our displacement scale, absolute scale 1.0, we can see we've got a lot of displacement. Okay, so we need to figure out exactly where failure is occurring on our load factor scale. So I'm going to turn off the displacements and we're going to make a graph versus result case. Under quantity we want to be checking uh, node displacement, dxyz, that's the total magnitude of displacement. And under position we're going to select the node at mid-span, which is this node here. And we're going to be plotting this against the load case factor of load case 1. Let's swap the axes around. Okay, so on the horizontal axis we have the total magnitude of displacement of this node. And on the vertical axis we have the load factor on the representative loads we applied. So we can see up until maybe a load factor of about 380 we have a completely linear response. Beyond that, between 380 and 400 we begin to soften slightly, and then at beyond 400 
we completely lose our stiffness. So stiffness can be measured as the uh, tangent of this curve. So we have our initial stiffness, we have a slightly reducing stiffness, and then at this point here, basically zero stiffness, because this structure has no redundancy. So once we form a single plastic hinge, that's it gone. We've lost stiffness. So we can see what the structure looks like at this um, load multiplier of 400. So we've got a tiny little bit of an elastic core remaining, but then as we go up, you can see that elastic core is almost completely disappeared, and we've got our full plastic hinge. So that gives us our um, load multiplier for our plastic collapse mud of 400. So our expected load uh, load factor was going to be 403. We're getting 400. So that's a pretty good matchup. So that's 99.3% of what we're expecting. So that's, that's close enough for me. Um, so I hope that was informative and interesting. In the next video we'll have a look at uh, introducing some uh, imperfections to the web and then including some nonlinear geometry and seeing how the slenderness reduces the capacity. Thanks for watching.